Hello and welcome back to the Crime Reel. Hugo Ignaz Rudolf Schenk was born on February the 11th, 1849, in the small town of Chekipod Koshirem, located in what was then the Austrian Empire, but now falls inside the Czech Republic. This town, that is currently home to approximately 1,000 inhabitants, is located 200 kilometers north of Vienna, which is Austria's capital. Hugo's family was said to be fairly well off. His father, Wilhelm, was a judge who sadly passed away when Hugo was just a young boy. His brother, Karl Schenk, became a local doctor, though he would later be distracted by Hugo's criminal schemes and ideas. Hugo's mother had hopes that her son would become an engineer. He had the potential and knowledge to be a successful man, but often showed signs of being untruthful, devious and dishonest, which made him a frustrating child to teach. He spent a lot of time in a military school and did not get on with his fellow classmates. They described him as a bully and a liar. His first job, at 21 years old, was as an apprentice for a manufacturer Hugo showed his true colours by stealing from the man early on. He was caught and arrested. Hugo was then sentenced to five years in prison, but due to him being such a young age, he was released after serving only two years in jail. After his time behind bars, Hugo set his sights on befriending a wealthy businessman. He successfully got a job as a bookkeeper for the potential mark and used his charms to integrate himself into the family. He did such a good job infiltrating the family that 24-year-old Hugo was given permission to marry a relative of the family. She was an intelligent and upstanding woman who worked as the family's governess and was responsible for teaching other children in the huge house. His job as a bookkeeper had Hugo travelling to different towns on a regular basis. Despite having a happy marriage to the governess, Hugo found himself having affairs in almost every town that he visited. Hugo presented himself as a tall, wealthy, well-spoken bachelor and proposed marriage to these women for his own monetary benefit, one of whom gave him 500 florins the standard coinage used across Europe at the time. When this woman realised that she had been tricked by Hugo, she went to the police. Hugo was with his wife when he was arrested. He was sentenced to two years imprisonment for the fraud. His young wife went back to her job as a governess and teacher. She wanted nothing more to do with him, but she had 300 florins for him once he was released. This was a gesture on her part for him to go off and start his life again once getting out of prison, but she did not want to be in contact with him ongoing. Whilst in prison, Hugo was kept in a cell with Karl Schlosserek, who was serving time for stealing. These two began scheming, and once they were released, the pair headed to Vienna. Using the money that his ex-wife had given him, Hugo and Carl set up a business. The premise was simple. Adverts were posted in local newspapers looking for young men who sought employment. After luring them out on the false promise of a job, the job seeker would be robbed. The first instance of this didn't go well for Carl. This victim proved too much for the thief and he was almost fatally wounded while Hugo watched from a distance. However, They took a different approach with their second victim, who was drugged in a forest before having his money stolen. Unfortunately for the two criminals, Carl and Hugo, the money they gained from this assault was negligible. This had them reconsidering and going back to the drawing board for better ways to make money. They changed tack and they then decided to target women. Again, placing an advert in a local paper Hugo posted a fake advert looking for a housekeeper. It didn't take long before they had their first victim 
Josephine Timal. She was 34 years old and thought she had struck the jackpot with the dashing Hugo Schenk. Hugo soon had her in his grips and convinced her that marriage was on the horizon. Josephine told Hugo that she had 300 florins saved, which he could have if his intentions were honourable. Hugo made Josephine write a letter to her aunt, Catherine, who had 1,000 florins saved up for her niece. This money was sent immediately after the wedding ceremony, addressed to Josephine. After they were married, Hugo and Josephine went on their honeymoon to a small town where some of Hugo's relatives lived. Hugo's friend Carl, that was the one that he met at the prison, was on the same train, along with Hugo's brother, Carl Schenk. Josephine was never seen again. Carl was responsible for the murder, and some reports suggest that Hugo's brother was also involved by holding Josephine down as Carl cut her throat. Josephine's lifeless body was then tied down and thrown into a nearby river. Her body was never recovered. Hugo then made his way back to Vienna, with plans already forming for his next victim. He soon received the thousand florins from Josephine's aunt in the post. This is when Hugo decided to write back to the aunt, offering her a place to stay. Hugo told her about a small country house and farm that he had purchased, which was not actually true. He added that Josephine would likely not be able to visit her, as she would be busy tending to him and the home. The aunt, Catherine, received the letter and then decided to sell her possessions and arrived in Vienna a few weeks later with 3,000 florins in her possessions along with trunks of her remaining items. Hugo met her at the station. Catherine was jovial and excited about her niece's good fortune of finding such a wealthy man who would care for her. Catherine spent one night at the hotel before meeting up with Hugo and Carl, who was pretending to be an acquaintance, and the group then went to a remote village. Whilst on the train that night, the men convinced Catherine to drink far more wine than she would normally consume, and she ended up worse for wear, and once she was drunk and they had arrived at their destination, they led Catherine up a path to a large rock face, since she was intoxicated and elderly, Catherine stood little chance against these two men. Cole proceeded to tie a large stone to her waist before pushing her off the rock and into the water below. Catherine's body was found some months later by tourists who walked that same path. In normal circumstances, Cole and Hugo may have been caught at this point, but if not for a stroke of luck, they were permitted to carry on. For some reason, Catherine and Josephine's relatives failed to report them missing for six months, leaving Hugo and Carl to continue their crime spree. But after Catherine's murder, there was a split between the two men. Hugo was the mastermind behind it all, and while Carl did the dirty work, Hugo found it hard to give him his share of Catherine's goods, wanting to try and rather keep it all for himself. It was this revelation that led him to attempt the next murder on his own. Hugo's next victim was an older Bavarian cook, Teresa Kettel. She had been left to mind her boss's home whilst he was away and had a stash of valuables and 2,000 florins saved. This would make her an ideal target for Hugo. When he offered Teresa a three-day trip with him, she readily agreed. Before leaving, Hugo told her about a recent spate of break-ins of empty houses. Because of this, he advised that she bring her valuables with her on their short holiday. After travelling by rail to a remote spot, Hugo took Teresa out for a picnic. They found a shady spot where they enjoyed wine together, though Hugo made sure she was drinking far more than he was. At this point, he pulled out his pistol and showed it to her, making it clear that the weapon was unloaded. In her intoxicated state, she took the gun and began playing with it and pulling the trigger. It is unclear whether Hugo had planned what he did next in advance or thought of it in the actual moment. He walked off to pick Teresa some flowers and when he was far enough away, Hugo put a bullet in the chamber of his pistol. 
He then handed her the gift of some wild flowers and the pistol, saying that she should keep it. Not knowing that the gun was any different than before, Teresa pointed the pistol towards her face and pulled the trigger. Her body was never found. Hugo then made his way back to Vienna with Teresa Kettle's goods in hand. He went out to a meal with friends, remarking to them that he had done a hard day's work and worked up quite the appetite. It was here that Hugo began talking to Emily Hoxman, a woman who had previously caught his attention. Proving that he would just about do anything, Hugo used the jewels that he had stripped from Teresa's dead body just hours earlier as a gift to charm Emily. But Emily was different. For some reason, Hugo saw her differently to the other women that he had preyed upon. When he invited her on a trip to Switzerland, she made it out alive after enjoying a holiday that was funded by Teresa's money. Once his funds began to dry up, Hugo went back to his Viennese hunting grounds. Two potential victims soon presented themselves, once again through an advert placed in the paper. The first was Rosa Ferenci, a young Hungarian girl who was the daughter of a nobleman. Like others had before her, Rosa fell victim to Hugo's charm. On December the 20th, Hugo left for Pressburg, which is now known as modern-day Bratislava. On the trip to Pressburg, Rosa travelled with Hugo for what she believed was going to be their wedding. Sadly, unbeknownst to her, Hugo had an old friend accompanying him, Karl Schlosserich. Whilst walking along the Danube, Karl came up behind Rosa and struck her with a hatchet. She lost consciousness, only coming to after she had been stripped of her items and thrown into the river. Later, her body was found in the Danube. Taking his share of the money, Hugo headed to Salzburg to meet with Emily. He spent a week with her before travelling back to Vienna for what would ultimately be his final crime. The second woman that Hugo had tricked was a maid called Josephine. She worked for Baroness Malfatti. The Baroness was a generous and kind woman. She used her wealth to help others, founding an asylum for elderly women that she maintained. Hugo convinced Josephine to leave one of the villa's windows open on the night of January the 8th. Hugo told Josephine that he would dose everyone in the house with morphine, herself included, to avoid suspicion so he and his accomplices could ransack the home. In actuality, Hugo planned to murder them all. Had he not been arrested, four more people would have been added to his death toll. Baroness Malfatti trusted Josephine, who had worked for her for 12 years. Because they had built up this trust, Baroness Malfatti didn't even notice that an expensive pearl necklace went missing and it was Hugo that had convinced Josephine to steal it, and then they could split the three pearls among other girls that he was courting. Finally, Hugo Schenk was arrested by police on January the 10th, 1884, and soon admitted to everything that he had done. He told detectives that he had four more young women lined up who had all agreed to go away with him, under his usual ruse that they were to be married. Hugo estimated that he would get around 30,000 florins from these women. With this money, he planned to use to run away with Emily to America. Emily knew nothing of Hugo's past crimes. She too had been fooled by him. Eventually, Emily became the principal witness to testify against her former lover. Hugo Schenk, his brother Karl Schenk and Karl Schlosserek were all found guilty of murder and sentenced to be hanged. Karl Schenk was set to be killed first, then Karl Schlosserek, and finally the mastermind of it all, Hugo Schenk. However, before they were taken to the gallows, Karl Schenk was pardoned by the Emperor Wilhelm II, as his role was determined to be lesser than his brother and Karl Schlosserek. Instead, Karl Schenk was sentenced to life imprisonment. On the 22nd of April, 1884, 200 people gathered to witness the execution. Karl Schlosserich stepped up first, 
He had been waiting for his family to arrive and say their last goodbyes for the whole day, but they never showed up. His wife had sent him some flowers, which he held as the noose was placed around his neck. Carl's last words were begging for forgiveness from God. Just two minutes later, Hugo was brought out and hanged. He remained composed throughout. Hugo Schenk and Karl Schlosserek were buried in an unmarked grave. Before being buried, Hugo's head was removed and examined. His skull is still viewable today in the Criminal Museum in Vienna, Austria. That concludes today's story. Thanks for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. The writer, Egon Kish, has dealt with the story of a woman who survived Schenk's attack in his short story book entitled A Woman Waits for Hugo Schenk. Goodbye.